dating, modern dating is only been around really since the boomers and cars. They invented cars so they could go on long dates and be dating away from family and friends and be more mobile and find partners elsewhere. And they had a mo it was basically a mobile sex booth is what the car became. That's really where modern dating came from. If you want to look at it that way. Um, so we look back through 200,000 years and we say, where do we find people alone searching among strangers to find somebody to marry them and build a life? Well, in rubble, in disaster, my village burned to the ground and I'm the last survivor. I will go find other survivors in the woods and try to find a, and build a tribe. My, my village, my, my town was leveled in war and the survivors are picking through the rubble, fighting each other for scraps, and maybe we can form a street gang to live. That's where people dated the way we date now. That's where people lived the way we live now is in utter disaster when the system has collapsed. So it seems to be that we are living in the ruins of a collapsed society, at least in our dating and friendships. We seem to be living in rubble right now as that's the only time throughout history that people lived the way we live now. So our nervous systems are overclocked here in the United States. The, the amount of anxiety and nervousness and, and all of that has, has skyrocketed to overwhelming levels. They don't even know what to deal with anymore. Your generation, you guys are a bundle of nerves that are barely able to survive on the human scale. And you guys think it's normal. You guys are like, what? I grew up this way. Like twitching frantically from the anxiety and just smoking pot and everything you could do to calm your nervous system enough to just make a phone call. And, and but that's, that's living in the rubble of a society that's living post collapse. That's living post Vikings rolled through, burned down your village, killed everyone. Now you have to bury their corpses and try to find other survivors to build a new village, or you're going to starve to death this winter. That, that that's what we're dating in. That's what we're living in. That's what our attachments right now are dealing with. And until we fix that, things are not going to get better. And I feel like <clears throat> to, to, to add to that, almost like the, the secular, uh, way that dating apps has created hierarchy and pooling towards a smaller proportion of the population. Because obviously, as you say, people can go onto the app and they, they stay attached to that app because the way that it breeds poor relationships potentially are based on like, you know, the appearances and what you put in a little chat box and what you can text rather than organic conversation. But if you if you look at the way that women are selecting and men are selecting on dating apps, I think it's like like top 5% of men get like 90% of the swipes or something like that's a made up statistic, but it's something absurd like that, right? It's that actually like... 10 top, top 10% of men are the 90% of women are clustering around the top 10% of men. And here's what's even worse is there's about a 10 to one ratio of women to men on those apps. So it's 1%. It's, it's 99% um, of women clustering around the top 10% of men. If you want to think about that way, like men have a, Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> it's just, let's just say it's horrible. It's like, oh, it's, I, I can't even begin to describe it. Imagine, imagine for every one woman who isn't chasing the top 10%, she's got 99 men chasing her. Think of it that way on the dating apps. If you, if men, if you were not in the top 10%, then there are 99 of you chasing each woman. Awful. <laughs> You're just setting yourself up for disappointment, failure, and probably bearing more into your, your, uh, avoidant attachment style, right? Like this is, just... this is why I get so many emails from guys that say, Adam, I've been on dating apps for two years and I want to kill myself. Is there a better method than this? Or should I just settle myself in and live alone forever in a cave? And, and that's what dating apps make you feel. It makes you feel like you are in the rubble of a Viking attack. They've taken all of the women and it's a hundred to one. And you're like, well, guess I'm going to just be neutered for the rest of my life. That's, that's really what it feels like is the next generation will have to make do because ours is screwed. That's what dating apps make you feel. Meanwhile, the vast majority of women, people don't realize that women are more of the population than men. It's about 52 to 48%. Most of those women are offline, sitting there waiting for somebody to knock on their door and marry them. And it's not going to work. Women usually prefer pre-selected men 
through their network, through their family, through connections, so that they can judge what you're going to do in advance, that you're not a Viking attacker who's going to raid them in the woods. Uh, that's what they're looking for, is pre-selected men through the old family and friends networks, which nobody has anymore. So the number of men and women who are successfully connecting is going down. That's why.